So this is my presentation today. Subluxated lenses and loose zonules. Let's run through this and see uh, what it throws up. The first patient was lying in a hotel uh, by the pool and a mango fell on the eye. Uh, well, the patient put Ziploc for three, four days and realized it was getting worse. And uh, on presentation, she had IOP of 50. Clear cornea, mid-dilated pupil and lens luxating into the AC, shutting the angle. So we had to reduce the pressure of the eye. Can't enter an eye with a 50 and 60 IOP. So you give mannitol, you give oral diamox, you wait about an hour or two, and then you take up the case once the pressure has fallen to reasonable levels. Let's see how it goes. Now this is basically a blunt trauma with 360 degrees zonulopathy. This is not like a 90 degrees loss of zonule or 180. So I would expect to be able to handle this with a CTR. Basically, you need to first make a small rexis. You need four and a half, five millimeter rexis to proceed in a case like this because you want a good rim of capsule so you can hold the whole lens bag up. You can see the entire human lens is luxating into the AC and it's kind of tilting like this. So all over, there's a tilt. So you do the hydro dissection, you see the wave passing across. And remember that in pupil hooks, you get five hooks, not four. And we don't want capsule hooks in this case. We want pupil hooks because they are much smaller and more manageable and easily available. So we put five pupil hooks and in we go and do an emulsification of the nuclear material. You can see that the bag, once it's held by uh, pupil hooks, it's kind of rock steady. So once the job is done, now the next step is to do an irrigation aspiration. And when you do an IA on a case like this, you have to be a little careful that you don't pull the capsular bag off the hook because even though there are five hooks, if you manage to pull it off one hook, the bag will get a little destabilized in that region. And once it's not being held with counter traction with the hooks, peeling the cortex is going to be a little more, a tad more difficult than if the hooks were there. So let's pull this out. Now, next step is I use a tension ring from a company called Oftec. And it's a European company, and these come preloaded like this. It's not really expensive, and it's far better than the, uh, the average PMMA tension ring that we get. So I'm going to inject this tension ring into the eye. It goes in one shot like this. It doesn't require any maneuvering. The bag is absolutely stable. And I kept a three-piece lens standby in case things weren't, didn't go well. But I was able to put the single piece lens that the patient had chosen for the case. So I can center it. You can see, get the legs in and center it very nicely in a stable bag IOL complex situation uh, behind the iris. And put in some air, make sure the AC is perfect the next day. And this is the end of the case. Let's look at the next case. Now, this is a bit of a complicated situation. In a subluxated lens, when should we use a ring segment? Or when should we use an ASIA anchor, which is a device which is becoming more and more popular. This was invented by Israeli surgeon uh, Ehud ASIA, who is a, a great inventor and was uh, a student of Blumenthal. So let's see how this kind of situation goes. So let's have a look at this case. When do we use capsule hooks in subluxation? When do we... Uh, use uh, a ring segment and when do we use ASIA anchor? So in a case like this, this is what femtosecond laser was meant for. Uh, femtosecond laser was not meant for doing a uh, six by six cataracts uh, in uh, refractive IOLs. Uh, femtosecond laser was meant to make our lives easier in sublux cases like this, where no amount of surgical technique is going to give you that perfect five millimeter punched out capsular axis that we are seeing here. Look at that. That's absolutely beautiful. We can go inside, use sodium hyaluronate and create space. I learned this technique on YouTube by watching I Kemad's video. And if you want to see this technique uh, done to perfection, uh, go and see Ike's video. And uh, put in capsular hooks in this case, not pupil hooks, because I wanted, uh, this has a larger zone of subluxation. I wanted more support. This is a Emad segment which we railroad out of the eye. It's very simple. You just connect the tenoproline to the segment. We don't even have to tie a knot. 
because it's double armed and you get the ring segment in the eye after railroading the needle out of the eye in the standard procedure and tie it tight and then put in a capsular tension ring as well to support the entire lens. So this will go inside the eye and center very nicely. Now, what if you have a poor excess with a small rim of capsule? And point is, how did you manage to get that a small rim of capsule in the first place? So femtosecond laser doesn't work every single time. And when we were learning, we didn't set the machine properly. And instead of doing a perfect rexis, it's kind of done uh, cortical punctures. You can see that there's absolutely no rexis. It looks like a rexis, but it isn't. It's the rexis that wasn't ever there. So while trying to do a manual rexis, it's kind of run off to the periphery like this. And uh, it's run off there. And I managed to pull it back in. But I realized that there's just not enough rim of capsule. So I mark uh, two millimeters behind. And we take this ASIA anchor out and 10 o proline suture. You can use 9 o straight needle as well. Because 9 o is a little better. But I had 10 o with me that day. So anyway, I pass it through the fixation hole of the ASIA anchor. And so you have a suture tied to the end of the anchor. Now you simply railroad that straight needle out of the eye, which is a rather straightforward procedure. So we want the ASIA anchor to hold the rim of capsular axis. That is the very important thing that we need here. Because this is not a hard cataract situation. This is a situation where we're just having the cortex pulled off like this. So now we've been able to imbricate the anchor inside the capsule. And now what we are doing is we are going through and we are going through the sclera twice. So I, I don't believe in making flaps, etc. I can just bury the knot in the tunnel made by this needle and that will do the job because it's tenoproline. The knot is really tiny. And teloproline is a surprisingly strong suture it takes a little effort to actually break it with your hands. Now, when you inject in an IOL, do it very gingerly and slowly on top of a repositor so that when it springs open and goes inside the capsular bag, it doesn't tear the capsular bag and doesn't dislodge the anchor. So you can see we have a perfect situation here, anchor in place and capsule. Now, can we use a single piece IOL or CTR? We've always been trained that uh, where you have to put a CTR or you have to put a ring segment and post that, then you have to put a three-piece IOL. A three-piece IOL has been like a savior or a go-to for all of us. But a lot of three-piece IOLs today don't have multifocal optics and maybe it's not the material that you want and things like that. And patient wants a single-piece IOL. Uh, in certain situations, they want an Acrisoft or they want some other lens. So can we use a single-piece IOL as a CTR? And the answer is that, yes, we can. This was a technique I published in archives of ophthalmology way back in 2009-10 uh, with a three-piece IOL and then modified it for single piece. So this is basically an ectopia lentis patient. Fill up that gap there with visco, not because uh, Alcon is paying me, but there's honestly no better viscoelastic to put in the anterior chamber at the beginning of surgery than visco. It's absolutely the best. And there are Indian clones of Viscote, like Orocote, etc. We do the same job. So I'm just saying Viscote as a generic for uh, sodium hyaluronate and chondroitin sulfate. But we get two, three from Indian companies which are doing the job. Care Group also has one which is really thick and viscous. So now you do a nice rexis, about five and a half, five, five and a half millimeters. And if the rexis runs out, you had it, you cannot use this technique. And then you will have to go back to the ASIA and that we saw in the preceding video. However, here everything goes well and you can do a nice rexis around. And this was, this predates our femtosecond laser. Otherwise, I would have definitely used the catalyst system and got a perfect rexis dead center. Also remember with a femtosecond laser, you cannot extend the rexis under the iris. What you see is what you get. If, if your exposure of the lens is four millimeters, your excess will be three millimeters. And then, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose because you'll have to manually extend it. So sometimes you always wonder why did I uh, take so many years to learn rexis? Uh, this is the time that you actually need it. Hi, Tushya. I think you can see me there. And uh, so now I suspend the lens up with the two hooks. And... Uh, 
start doing a FACO emulsification, a slow motion FACO. So this is not really a hard cataract course. This is basically a subluxated lens and difficult situations course. So this is not a hard cataract. Just go inside with the FACO tip and everything comes out. Feel the cortex mm -hmm. off. And once the cortex has been peeled off, then go inside with the capsular tension ring and inject the CTR. So this was this predates once again our uh, capsular tension ring uh, from off tech. So this was the capsular tension ring that you have to load into the injector and then inject. So in it goes. It takes a little more jugglery than the off tech system. Now this is your single piece IOL, and uh, I tie the tenoproline suture nice and tight to the midpoint of the haptic, which corresponds to the center of the IOL. And now I pass the needle down the barrel of the IOL. And now we have a situation where uh, the needle is attached to the IOL by the suture and we can inject the IOL in and still maintain a 2.8 millimeter tunnel and not have to open the tunnel and uh, put in a rigid IOL. So you don't need a PMMA IOL, just your foldable IOL do the job. Pass your nice long straight needle that comes a proline suture, which is uh, more than one and a half inches, nearly two inches long. So it goes straight out of the back of the eye like that, about two and a half millimeters behind, and then just simply inject the IOL in. Once the IOL is injected inside the bag, it becomes a very stable situation because now that part of the subluxation of the bag is being supported by the haptic, and you can do this with most of the haptics we prefer these Rayner pattern lenses because the haptics really stiff and does the job of a emmet segment. Now you can simply take out your hooks and adjust suture tension by passing the needle halfway through the sclera twice when you don't really need to make a flap and do anything like that. This will do the job. And now we tie this nice and tight and adjust suture tension. And this is the end of the case.